All right, let me share my screen. Oh, I'm, I don't know where to click. How do I find it? Is it this button? No, over here. Oh, there's a share button. Uh, can you see what I'm sharing? Is anyone there? Have you ever had that issue before? Are you just unsure exactly what to do when sharing your screen or presenting with Microsoft Teams? Well, luckily for you, I'm gonna share some of my best tips and practices when working inside of Microsoft Teams and screen sharing from someone who does it every single day. Hey everyone, Jonathan Silver here, Pragmatic Works. What we're gonna be looking at is just simply what are some of the easiest tips and tricks around screen sharing in Microsoft Teams so that whenever you go ahead and lead that presentation next time, you know exactly where to go, where to click, and to make it as smooth of a presentation as possible. So first things first, as we take a look at our Teams call here, you could see that just a general Teams call, you could see how many people we have, all of the reactions, that's all great stuff, but let's take a look at how exactly to share my screen. Now for us to share, it's this button right here on the upper right hand corner, right next to that leave button. You can see we do also have our quick access control shift E, which will bring up the exact same menu. When you select share, what you get are two major options to share your screen or a window. The big difference between the two is what you're having the end user on the other side of that share be able to see when you make your clicks. Like let's say for instance, we wanna share our screen. We can choose whichever screen we want depending upon how many monitors we're working with. And if we wanna go ahead and let's say share the screen I'm currently on here, what it does is it gives you as the presenter the ability to show your user everything on that screen itself. So all the background apps and icons and anything running and showing up on that screen itself will appear when you share, just like you can see here in my other monitor. This is exactly what we're looking at when I share my screen, the, the full screen itself. What we can also do is then if say I want to share a document or share something else, what I can do is go ahead and open whatever I want to share. Let's say I want to open up this Word document and I can share it just like that. Now, what you'll notice is on my screen, it looks pretty big. In fact, I can zoom a little bit and it looks pretty large, but on the screen I'm sh that I'm sharing and what other people are seeing, it's still kind of small. Right? It's kind of difficult to be able to see. And a lot of that is just simply because of screen resolution differences. So one of the things that I definitely recommend if you're going to be doing a lot of presenting just on your window right then and there is take a look at your screen resolution of your monitor. We can do that by simply doing a right click and then going to our display settings. And in your display settings, when you select whichever screen you're sharing at that time, you can come on down and you can look at the scaling. The scaling here, a lot of time you have 150 or 100% you're recommended. I would suggest going as high as possible when doing that so that you can have it really, really easy for that end user. So now if I were to go back and take a look at that Word document a little bit more, it looks really big for me, but it's also much easier to read for the other user who's actually seeing my screen that's being shared. So playing with that screen resolution is definitely a really easy, quick, on-the-fly option for you to do when working with screen share. And as you saw, it's just as easy to turn that back to what we had earlier, so you don't have to worry about having this super zoomed feel every time you're working with your machine. Now, not only is that gonna be working for us, say in Microsoft Word, but let's say I went to Excel and I, I was working here in Excel and I was just typing away and doing all of my things. Well, you'll notice because I have this zoomed in, it's definitely much easier to see for that end user. If I were to go back and change that resolution once more, and let's say I would go back to what I had earlier, which is 125%, a little bit less than the recommended, but I like this kind of feel for myself. If I were to take a look at that, say in Excel, look how much different that is compared to the size we had before. So again, screen resolution, definitely your friend here when helping out when sharing the full screen or sharing the full window. Now, when 
you are doing this, say, oh goodness, I wanna move over to a different window. What you need to do is you need to go ahead and stop sharing to be able to move over. You can't just say, all right, I'm gonna move everything over here and now let's look over that, that other window. It just doesn't work that way. So you'll have to choose stop sharing. You can see I have it at the top here, this pop out that does appear for us. And then you'll get to go here and go share and choose the other one. And you'll get to go back and forth every time when you are doing your share from there. Now the screen share is really great because it gives you pretty much total control over everything that's appearing on your screen, everyone else is seeing, but you do sometimes run into those issues of size and other things. Now, the other option we have is the window share. The window share allows you to choose a specific application to be able to share so that your users only seeing that, where you can have other things happening in the background and all they are seeing is that specific application. So let's say I came in here and I chose to, let's go back to that Word doc here. I can just choose the Word document itself. And as you can see, as the user who's like seeing the presentation, someone else in the meeting, I can only see the Word doc itself. Now what I can do here as the presenter is I can actually move it, make it smaller here. And you'll notice is as I move it around, in the end, the other person seeing it that's in the call with me, they don't see any of that movement. They just see the same thing each time. In fact, what I can also do is I can make it a little bit smaller like this and have it fill in that screen. And this is where I can do some zoom only on the document itself. And the user sees that nice big zoom. So it's something to play with here when you're presenting is think about the actual size of the window. It's gonna fill up everything everyone else sees when you share your screen. So it is actually a best practice if you're choosing a specific window itself or an application, go ahead and make it small. Don't make it teeny tiny, but don't go full screen either. Make it a little bit smaller and then you can allow them to see it much, much larger. What it also lets you do is if you ever have any meeting notes or anything on the side, you could have another option in your on your window itself. So let's say I'm presenting and I wanna have some notes for myself during a really big presentation. I can have that over here on the side. And if you look on the other screen, when someone's looking at it, they're not seeing all those notes. They're just seeing what you're sharing. So it gives you as the presenter a little bit of a, here's my bullet points I want to make sure I'm touching on during the presentation. I can have that on the side itself. Now, part of that is, okay, well, what if I wanna switch over? What if I wanna see that Excel file rather than this Word document? Well, I can't just simply move it in front because I'm sharing that specific window. So you will have to stop sharing, go into your Teams call, stop sharing, and then choose the other window to share. So you have to select share, go to your window again, and then go to your Excel booklet, whatever it may be. You can see here for Excel, Again, I have it pretty small. My user on the other end is seeing that, but I do have the ability to show only this and they can go ahead and see that really, really nicely inside of that meeting itself. Now, some other things to keep in mind of when working specifically with the window share, like here in Excel, if you have any pop-up windows or anything that does appear that you're trying to present on or anything like that, the user's not going to see that. So let's say I come in here and I choose um, maybe some of my conditional formatting rules or options. Notice I have my rules open here in my screen, but the user, they don't see that. So we're only able to see the main window itself, the application that we're selecting, not anything else that's there. None of the layers come with it. So keep that in mind that if you wanna be able to show the pop-ups or extra things all at the same time, this just isn't the option for you. So you want to make sure that everything's working really, really well and kind of depending upon the type of presentation you have. Some other things that we can also work with is let's say, for instance, this maybe is a little small and I want to share, um, I'll close this window. And once I close it, by the way, it stops the screen share as well because the window's gone. But I want to share, say, this Word document once more. And for my Word document, I'll go ahead and make my sizing a little bit smaller here. I'm gonna share it again. And I'll do, you know what? This time I'll do the full screen. 
And let's say it is just a little bit small for my user. They're just not being able to see everything. You can go ahead and zoom in on that. You can have it where you can use your magnifier, your Windows magnifier to help you out with that. So it just makes it a little bit easier to be able to see. And to use that magnifier, you're simply just gonna hold down that Windows key and use the plus minus keys in your keyboard. So if I wanna zoom in, I can go ahead and zoom in. Now, maybe I went a little bit too much there. You can kind of hold it down, see how you can play with that a little bit, zoom in and out with that that magnifier and you can find the the you know the best way to okay there it is now I'm super zoomed in on that one little area let me just zoom on out to get back to my full screen thing now that is a really great way of being able to do that and you can go ahead and zoom in and out very very simple now there's also another trick that I like to use and we use here a lot at pragmatic works and that's an external tool called zoom it where you can download it it's free it's from microsoft you can go ahead and download Zoom It, and there's a link there in the chat for you, where you can go ahead and actually do your own Zoom. And then if I can use just this external downloadable tool, and then boom, now I, what I can also do is I can type on screen as well. And you'll see that those that are in the call with you are seeing what you're typing there as well. It's a really great feature to work with. You can use a lot there with Zoom It. And once you learn all the hotkeys, you'll be pretty good at using them as well. So it's another great tool to be able to have that end user see what you're sharing really, really nicely. And no matter the size of the text, the font, you can make your way around to be able to see everything they wanna see. Now we've talked about Word, we've talked about Excel, but what about PowerPoint? Well, let's go ahead and take a look at what that looks like. I'm gonna go ahead and stop sharing and then let's take a look at some of our options specifically with Microsoft PowerPoint. So I'll select stop sharing there and let's see. If I wanna work with PowerPoint presentation, because a lot of us are doing that all the time, what we can do is we can come in here and we can share, of course, the full screen. When you're doing that, you'll just decide, do I wanna go in presenter mode? Do I wanna have the full window? Do I wanna just show them the slides with the notes on the side? What are we sharing from there? So if I select that and then go to my PowerPoint presentation, I can pull this up and here I go, I can have it in there. Now, if I just leave it like this, you can see your users that are in the call with you, they're seeing exactly what you're showing them. If I come in here and I go into the slideshow mode, they're gonna be able to see all that as you scroll through, they can see everything that you see, but you're in total control. You're not gonna give them the ability to slide through on their own. If you wanna have them to go ahead and navigate through the entire deck themselves, share that with them in the in the chat. If they're internal users, they can open it up and they can navigate through that presentation at their own pace and they can go ahead and take a little control there. If they're external users, this is definitely the way to go. So you're gonna wanna share your presentation one way or the other. I prefer to go with the full screen itself. I like the ability to have maybe a second monitor to work with, but if you only have the one, this might be the only option you want, or if you want to. So then the other option is, well, let's go ahead and share our PowerPoint window instead. Now, this is a, an option I tend to not take personally, just because I like to have the entire uh, screen itself, especially with PowerPoint to be able to work with, because sometimes I'm in and out of slides, and I don't always wanna have just PowerPoint itself. This, however, if I go full window here, you could see I can see the same thing in my presentation as someone that's joining, but everything gets a little bit smaller. If I want to go to the exact presentation itself, there it is. Again, I'm also losing those notes. Now we do have an option though here is to select present in Teams. When we choose that, here, you get to go ahead and say, okay, what file are we working with? How do we wanna do that? Do your little save if you need to. And then you can actually drop that into your Teams meeting. You can see it's loading the, the file in PowerPoint Live. And when you do that within your Teams meeting, it's going to give that end user the ability to go ahead and click through and navigate through that presentation at their own pace and go ahead and decide the slides that they wanna read, really kind of go ahead if they want to, to see all that for themselves. Now, I will say as a caveat to that is sometimes that might not be the best way for you because 
maybe they're not paying attention to the exact slide you're on at that time. So keep that in mind when working with your presentation. All right, so the last bit that I wanna show you here when working with our team's call and best practices is sharing sound. It's gonna be something that's really important to work with when you really wanna have the full feel of maybe a video, uh, audio, maybe it's inside of your PowerPoint presentation or somewhere online. You really wanna make sure that you have that set up ahead of time so your end user gets the full effect of everything you're sharing with them. All you'll need to do is come click here, share and include sound. What this will allow you to do is allow that video, the audio that we're talking about here to go through the call so the end user hears the exact same thing. So now I can come in here, I'll go to my monitor here, I'll go ahead and open up my browser and let's say I wanna go and prepare for another Microsoft certification. I can come here to Cert XP, go ahead and select a level here. Let's see, let's go to this one, clean data, working with some Power BI. And if I want to have this read aloud, I can just go ahead and choose. And you can hear. In Power BI, how do you address the click find file error during data import? And my user that is on the other side of the call with me can actually hear the same thing I can hear. So videos play really well, audio plays really well. I can come in here and say, you know what? I think this one is, if I can't, couldn't find file, it's probably the location of the file. Let's see if that's correct. I can hit submit and I can even hear, look at that. Myself answering the question and making sure we have the proper support for getting that question correct. So it does give us the ability to have that sound come in really, really clear, just like you could hear, everyone else can hear the exact same thing. So that's gonna make your life a lot easier when trying to flip back and forth, going through the ability to share that sound and everything else that comes with it. So it's a really, really great way to go ahead and, and have that directly done for us when we share the window itself. So some of the big key features we talked about here is the difference between sharing your screen and sharing the window. Come in here, decide, do I wanna to go to the full screen share or do I want to share the window itself? If I do the full screen share, make sure your resolution of that screen actually fits a good size. It's pretty zoomed in so your user can actually see everything nice and large. If you're choosing the window, keep in mind that you're not gonna have the options for pop-ups and you're gonna to have to flip back and forth a few times if you wanna do that. But you also get to hide some of your notes on the side there. Also, think about some external tools like ZoomIt to help you go ahead with your presentation so you can annotate, you can zoom in, you could put highlights on the screen as you are presenting so whoever is in the call with you sees exactly what you want them to see at the time. Thanks for hanging out with me. See you next time for more tips and tricks working around all of our Microsoft products.